My brothers and sisters, if you're a good person, a good Muslim, a believer who worships Allah properly, correctly, to the best of their ability, it does not mean that you will not go through hardship. Remember that. Perhaps you will go through greater hardship. Let me explain one simple explanation. Those who are not enrolled in the school will not be tested by the school. Remember that simple way of looking at things. You cannot be a person who's a total outsider and expect the school to examine you, to test you. You have to enroll. You have to be a member. You have to have attended the lessons. You have to say that I am following the rules of the school and I'm going to attend the school and then the school will test you every so often. So my brothers and sisters, when you have adopted Islam and worshipped Allah alone and you've understood the rules and regulations and acknowledged them and you are saying, I'm going to walk on this path of Allah. Allah says, I will definitely test. We will test you definitely without a doubt with a lot of things. And these things are mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah and various other surahs. So it's not like because you're a believer, Everything's going to be easy for you. It's not. It's going to be difficult. In fact, more difficult than others. Take a look at Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. During approximately this time of Ramadan, the Battle of Badr took place the 17th of Ramadan. Now we're slightly after the 17th, but still the battle took place of Badr. And prior to that, the moment the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, declared the prophethood and reminded the people of Quraysh that I am a warner for you that a punishment will overtake you if you continue in these bad ways and habits. They hated him. They were against him. They persecuted him and his companions. In fact, Waraka bin Nawfal, who was the cousin of Khadija, binti Khuwailid radiallahu anha, initially when prophethood had come to, or revelation came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she took him to him. She took the prophet, peace be upon him, to Waraka. Waraka said, I wish that I would be alive the day that your people persecute you, remove you from your city, from Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. And he asked a question, will they remove me from my own city? He said, yes, that's what they've done with all the messengers. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. Look, persecution starts from the day you declare the right thing. Because shaitan and the devilish forces don't want what is right. They, their whole life, they will feel threatened by what you're saying. They thrive on corruption. They thrive on bad and evil. And when you're too clean for the community. They will fight you because you're clean. They will fight you because you're upright. They cannot be corrupt anymore. They will fight you because they cannot take their bribes and they cannot do all the wrong things. You are basically in the wrong place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. According to them, you're in the wrong place, but according to Allah, you're doing the right thing. So Allah says, when you declare faith, we will test you in order to understand, in order to see, are you really true in your faith or are you just being fake? This is why in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah Almighty says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ We have definitely tested those before you as well in order to distinguish between those who are truthful and those who are liars in their faith and their belief. You don't believe in Allah, you haven't even enrolled in the school, perhaps your test will be less. So go and look around those who are not Muslims, those who haven't submitted to their maker alone, those who don't have rules and regulations governing their dress code, the way they work, the way they walk, the way they talk, the what they eat, what they do, how they work, what they consume, how they pray and what they will do and not do. They have an easy life, subhanAllah. In most cases, they don't, they're not really persecuted. In most cases, they are pockets of persecution. And we as Muslims will be against that persecution. But for us, we've been persecuted for years on end and we're blamed for the loss of others. This is nothing new. This has been happening from the very beginning. The moment the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, or the Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, declared that the truth struggled at the face or they struggled in the face of all of this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. When you say I'm a Muslim, you will be, there will be people who will look at you funny. They will give you the looks. They will say dirty things. They will be, they might even want to hurt you. There are so many of our brothers and sisters, even in relatively free countries who have actually been stabbed to death, hurt, killed, etc. Just because they say La ilaha illallah. The Quran speaks about it.
Allah speaks about the people who have been driven out of their homes only because they declare that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. This was from the beginning. This was right at the beginning and it's happening to this day. So it doesn't mean that because you have declared your faith in Allah, you're praying five times a day, you're doing tahajjud, you're dressing appropriately, you're reading Quran, you're fasting properly, you're giving charity, you've been for hajj, you're a good person, you're kind to everyone, you don't hurt a soul, that you will not be hurt. You will not be tested. There is nothing like that. You will still be tested perhaps more in this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in, in so many surahs, Surah Ala Imran, Allah says it as well. Near the end when Allah says, وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا Allah says you will be tested. You will be tested in your wealth and in yourselves. You will be tested with lives and with the loss of your property. And you will hear from other people of other faiths a lot of evil and wrong against you. They will accuse, they will say the wrong things, they will fabricate, they will try to create, you know, uncertainty they will do whatever you will hear a lot of harm against you from them what should you do allah says wa in tasbiru wa tattaqu fa inna dhalika min azmi al umur subhanallah if you are patient and you actually develop the consciousness of allah that is the best thing that you could do the best of your affairs may allah make it easy for us the reason i say this today is because many people send me messages and emails and and ask questions to say but i'm such a good person i try to worship allah why is everything going wrong it's not going wrong it's going as per allah's plan take it in your stride you are on earth to be tested you've enrolled in the college and once you've enrolled, you'll be tested every week, then you'll be tested every month, then you'll be tested once a year, major tests every so often, every season. That's life until the day you go. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, thereafter, they were persecuted year in, year out, every time. And they went, the first lot of companions were sent migration to Abyssinia, which is in Ethiopia today. The second time they did a migration to Medina Munawwara, which was the major migration. And then subhanAllah, they came back and they there were wars upon wars. So they didn't have a time of total peace throughout their lives. They had a lot of hardship and difficulty. Many of them lost their lives through these battles and because they were persecuted. So my brothers and sisters, it's normal. When you go, for example, to an airport across the globe, if you're a Muslim, chances are you're going to be questioned, you're going to be stopped, whatever the reason may be. Sometimes they call you Mr. Random. You know, maybe you might be and sometimes, and you know what, it's their right to ask you a few questions. It's not their right to disrespect you or to dishonor you or to actually insult you. But sometimes they will do that. Some people know no better. They haven't been cultured. They don't know. They're not humane enough. You know, they probably treat animals better than they treat us sometimes. It can happen. It would happen. It is happening. Subhanallah. You know, you just expect it. But with a smile, continue and progress and Allah will open your doors. Allah will open your doors. Don't worry, that beautiful character <clears throat> that you depicted and you showed, the beautiful character that you showed at a time when they were being nasty towards you and unreasonable towards you, that is what will make them think if they have an iota of goodness within their hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely bless you in a billion ways. You passed your test, they failed theirs. Look at so many innocent Muslims incarcerated in so many parts of the globe. What was the crime? A false accusation, perhaps, perhaps uh, something that wasn't even supposed to be a crime. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free all those who are innocent. I mean, and so my brothers and sisters, the reason I chose to speak about this today is primarily because this is the season where the Battle of Badr took place. This is what happened, you know, the run up to the 17th of Ramadan, the 17th, and just thereafter, so much of this, you know, uh, momentum where the Muslims had won. They won the battle against all odds. They were small in number. They were ill-equipped in terms of weaponry. But subhanAllah, that they were trying to go and get back what rightfully was theirs in terms of property and wealth and so on, the dignity. And Allah gave it to them. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. May Allah bless every one of us. Take it in your stride. If you're tested, no problem. You will just ask Allah, say, Oh Allah, you promised to test us. Please test us with that which is easy for us to, to, to succeed in. Te don't test us with that which we will fail or that which will be difficult and hard. And then when you're tested, this is something very noble that I'm about to say. When you're tested by Allah, ask yourself, Am I managing it? If you're managing it, thank Allah for the test and say, Oh Allah, you tested me. Alhamdulillah, this test was easy. Don't test me with other tests. Then you're a true believer.
Subhanallah. You're thanking Allah for the test. Imagine you go for an examination at the same school we were talking about and the exam was so easy. You come out with a big smile, but you went for the exam, didn't you? You studied for it. You worked hard for it. You went in. There were questions. They grilled you. They questioned you. And when you came out, you were smiling because you cracked it. Mashallah. So thank you might go to thank the teachers to say, oh, thank you so much for such a lovely exam. Well, thank Allah for the examinations he puts in your life that are quite easy. He gave you the rules. He told you what to do. You know the book. You learned everything. Take it in your stride. He spoke about sabr. He spoke about taqwa. He spoke about so many other things. And that's how you will pass your test. So those who have reverted to Islam, it's not going to be a party. It's going to be very difficult. People will let you down. People may embarrass you. People may betray you. It can happen. It's Allah testing your faith. Were you genuine or were you not? Same applies to those who are born Muslims. Are you genuine or are you just paying lip service to it? We will struggle. And there will be days in the lives of everyone where we struggle, more so a believer. And I explained to you why believers would have greater tests than those who don't believe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. That too is a verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how at times those who don't believe, they have everything in life sometimes and everything's moving smooth, like they say smooth sailing. But subhanallah, Allah says, well, we've prepared a whole hereafter for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us upon the goodness, upon worshipping our maker alone and not uh, associating anything or anyone with him in worship and following the sunnah and the teachings of beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. We must make sure that we've sought the forgiveness of Allah Almighty. My brothers, my sisters, it's not possible that we exit the month of Ramadan without having made an effort to achieve forgiveness. And Allah Almighty says he will definitely forgive. So my brothers and sisters, you and I are weak. We're human beings. We commit sin. We do things that are wrong. We have weaknesses, but Allah Almighty is the most merciful. Human beings may never ever forgive you. That's the nature of humankind. A lot will hold things against you even after you've died. But with Allah Almighty, He will not even remind you of something you've done that was terrible if you sought forgiveness and changed your ways. So Allah Almighty says He is willing to forgive you. Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah wants to forgive you. Just seek that forgiveness. One of the main things about Ramadan, destruction be upon the one who witnesses the month of Ramadan and still didn't achieve forgiveness. It's being dished out. It's being distributed. It's being given by Allah. These are the most powerful nights. These are the most blessed nights of the entire year. You're not going to get better than Laylatul Qadr. So for you to seize the opportunities of all these nights to worship Allah a little bit more, to make a slightly better effort, a bigger effort is something that is required of believers. Please, my brothers and sisters, let's make use of these last few evenings of Ramadan, the last days, the last fasts that are compulsory fasts of this beautiful month of Ramadan. And after Ramadan, inshallah, let's try and keep up at least the Mondays and Thursdays, at least the 13th, 14th, 15th of every lunar month. Allah will open our doors. Inshallah, I pray that our lives can change for the better. I pray we can grow. Every one of us has certain things we would like to achieve to please Allah. And we know we want to do it. Allah gives us these opportunities in order for us to go ahead and to achieve those things. Come on, just do it as they say, Subhanallah. We must make sure that we've seized these opportunities to achieve what we know we have to and we want to. You and I know certain things perhaps that you want to, you have to have gotten done for Allah anyway. Get them done now. Make a resolution. That's it. From today on, I'm going to do this for the sake of Allah. Or I'm going to quit this habit or this sin or whatever else it may be for the sake of Allah. This is Ramadan. How can we allow Ramadan to exit without having earned that beautiful pleasure of Allah? May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and ease. My brothers and sisters, so many people out there are struggling with their addictions. So many people are struggling with so much. We ask Allah to make it easy. Be strong. Give it up for the sake of Allah. Cut it down at least to begin with. 
and then give it up for the sake of Allah. So many people are struggling with so much with bad habits. Whatever the habit is, you know what it is. Come on, let's work on it. Let's earn the pleasure of Allah. Don't allow shaitan to grip you post Ramadan. Remember that Allah Almighty gives us these beautiful opportunities as a gift. Imagine if we didn't have Ramadan, when would people ever be able to be encouraged so strongly to turn towards Allah? Many people have repented this Ramadan. Are you going to be one of them? Many people have changed their lives this Ramadan. Are you going to be one of them? Many people have declared and decided to do the right thing from this day on. Are you going to be one of them? I don't want to be from among those who loses out when everyone else is winning. I don't want to be from among those who's not forgiven when everyone else is being forgiven. Imagine a large crowd of people, people are all being forgiven and I'm just sitting in the corner doing my thing. Astaghfirullah. That shouldn't be the case. We can, we can do the right thing. Do you know what I found very, very interesting? The company you keep, when you have good company, good people around you, I promise you it is the biggest blessing. When you have good people around you, it's one of the biggest blessings. They, they automatically empower you to do the right things and stay away from the wrong things. But when you have company that doesn't even care, people who don't bother about their relationships with Allah, people who have no taqwa themselves, if that's your company, a day will come when you may lose everything you have to in that direction. You, become, you start thinking that you need to be like them, yet you were a far better person when you were alone. But because you fell in the wrong company, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has spoken about this company. A person is known by the companionship they keep. Secondly, the Quran speaks about the day of regret, the day of judgment when the people who had bad company will regret having had those people as their company because they would have led them astray. So let's polish that up as well, inshallah. Let's be good company and let's be in good company and let's encourage people to be doing the right things. May Allah bless every one of us. I pray that Allah accepts every act of worship of ours and multiplies the reward of it. I pray that Allah softens our hearts to do the right thing. We know what's the right thing. May Allah soften our hearts to do the right thing all the time. And may Allah Almighty keep us steadfast upon it. And may Allah Almighty never ever take away the goodness He has bestowed upon us because of our ingratitude. He says, when you're ungrateful, I won't just snatch away what I've given you, but I will punish you. That's what Allah says. We don't want that. We really don't want that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment can only be for those who really, really deserve that. Really, we don't want to be nasty people. Develop a link with Allah and you won't regret.